What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Chaos Child. Last time we were hacking into the research lab's computers, and we learned that they were doing experiments to try and activate um, special abilities in people using the Rorschach test that resembled the sumo stickers. And we also found images of a, t uh, a patient who is the same as uh, Taku's... Oh, how am I going to word this? Tahu remembers seeing her being experimented on many years ago. And now we're going to learn more about her identity. There we go. Forceful experiments. The kind that could kill you. When I heard that, I almost threw up. Oh, this guy's constitution is one. I did my best to keep Kurosato from finding out. But, いや、正確には、この実験施設が地震の直後に機能を終えてしまったため、彼女に関するデータが存在しないというのが正しい。ただ、地震の犠牲になった可能性は高いな。そうですか。it was horrible, but I felt a little less like throwing up. At least she hadn't died because of the experiments, or because we'd abandoned her. Hearing that made me feel like I'd been forgiven a little. A violent sense of self-hatred overcame me again. She'd been practically tortured here as part of those experiments, and then been caught in the earthquake. But I... Then I felt something tugging at the edge of my memories. Hadn't I heard that name somewhere before? But where, and from who? Before I could think about it any further, Ito spoke up, hesitantly. あちこちに人がいましたよね。それに小さな女の子も。うん、そうだよね。俺たちその女の子を追ってここへ来たんです。ここが廃棄された施設って言うなら、あの子一体何を？ああ、そのことか。Kurosato closed the file on Mina Misawa Senri, and her face took on its usual cool, emotionless expression. ここは今実験中にトラブルのあった被験者たちの保護施設として使われている。実験中にトラブルのあった被験者。実験に失敗して脳に損傷を負ったり、正気を失った感情。程度によって軟禁、もしくは監禁しておくための地下収容所ということだ
幸い彼女は最後まで正気を失うことなく実験に耐え生き残った今はこのフロアで収容者たちの世話をする仕事を与えられているらしい収容者たちの世話 I thought she was a criminal who'd stolen my smartphone and threatened me. I mean, she could be both of those things. And what's more, I thought that she was either connected with the killer or maybe that she was the killer herself. But now I wasn't sure. Yeah, <laughs> You know what I think? You know how she's always with that really old dude? I bet that's Dr. Nerose, the one who worked on her, and she's controlling him like a puppet or something. Something along those lines. Maybe. We'll see. As my mind raced, Kuno Santo was checking out every bit of data on the machine. But. Kuno Sato sounded uncharacteristically ticked off as she closed all the folders and turned off the PC. How is it uncharacteristically? That's how she sounds. That strange word snapped me out of my reverie. It seemed that was what she was looking for. I looked at her, hoping for some kind of answer, but she just glared back at me with terrifying eyes. She was right. I'd snuck in here as a child, but that was all. I didn't remember the details. She was right. Damn it! There must be some way. I looked around the room and saw the rows of monitors. If they were on, they could at least tell us what was going on around the facility. Maybe they can tell us where Yamazoe Uki was. Suddenly, the room was bathed in pale light. All the monitors on the wall turned on. All we could do was gasp. What we thought were security cameras were showing. Hundreds of sumo stickers. I almost screamed. I was so surprised. Inside the monitors on the wall was face after sumo sticker face, all looking at me. I mean, it's not... No. I love it when I, I have a thought, and then I just go like, nah, it's not worth saying. Blah, 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 and then I just make a sound. That's all. Whenever you hear me, just go... Blah, 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 that's what it is. That or I stumbled on my words. Ooh, the torture dimension, my favorite. Kuno Sato. I was back in the chair. Ooh, look at that gaming setup over there. Which was the dream? Was I dreaming of being in this chair, or had I been dreaming of being in the monitoring room? My head felt really cold. Oh, that's right. They'd open my skull. Good, 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 good. Did I? Pink 
ですかもちろんださてそれじゃあそろそろいただくとするか Kunosato grinned with glee and took something metallic out of her pocket. A spoon? Oh, the Hannibal Lecter thing's been played out. No brain eating, come on. She was eating it! Good. Kurosada was eating my brain. Why is it making so many <laughs> sounds? Like, why would it go? <laughs> it would just be a silent, wouldn't it? Just be a. Are there even ju that many juices for the slurping? <laughs> Stop! Fuck off! Oh, one more coming. Excuse me. I had another weird delusion. I quickly shook my head and slapped my butt cheeks to snap myself out of it, as I normally do. Serika and Ito looked unhappy. It was because of the sumo stickers displayed on the monitors. I looked at the monitors once more, trying my best to avoid the sumo stickers. <sighs> some of the monitors were showing the inside of the hospital, but some were looking somewhere else. Street corners in Shibuya, signs under bridges, alleyways, overpasses, train stations, staircases, door walls, more words and nouns. And then I realized, all the monitors with sumo stickers. Some of them I knew. That was the spot where Caruso had been attacked. Of course, there were sumo stickers there. Kurosato pointed to a corner of one of the monitors. I quickly looked away before I got a direct look at the sumo sticker. In other words, whoever was using this place put the 11th Rorschach image all over Shibuya and used these cameras to find people who reacted to it. And then they took them here and did those horrible experiments. <coughs> I remembered what I'd seen happen to Minamisawa Senri and felt like I was going to throw up again. <gasps> and then Kunosato made a sharp noise. She put her hand on one of the monitors to brush away the dust, then stared at it. It showed something moving around a dark room. There was no sumo sticker there. It wasn't an image of Shibuya or of the hospital above, so it was probably showing one of the rooms down here. It was definitely the girl on the screen. She was saying something to an old person lying on a bed and gently wrapping belts around their arms and legs. He's okay. That girl was my only clue as to where my smartphone was. Which meant that we had to find the room on the monitor. Kunosato suddenly told me that she knew where it was. She'd been so uncooperative so far, I had no idea why she suddenly decided to help. But when she saw the girl, she suddenly said that she'd go with us. Of course I knew her well enough by now. She wasn't helping us. She'd simply taken an interest in that girl. At least, that was how I saw it. As we moved down the dim hallway, the temperature dropped, and the humidity went up. This is it. She stopped in front of a door with strange words on the plate. 
Confinement room three. Kurosato opened the door a little, taking care to make a little noise as possible. I peeked inside. And there I saw a world that I'd only ever seen in movies. There were rows of beds in the room. And there were, were what appeared to be prisoners lying on them. They had different ages and sexes. Some were old, some seemed young. And one of them I recognized. It was the old lady the girl had been walking with before. Oh, she was an old lady. Uh. <laughs> Some were screaming, some were counting numbers endlessly. One was a girl who was endlessly chewing her food. It seemed unreal. I remember the woman with the baby carriage I'd passed before and felt cold sweat forming on my palms. <laughs> I like how they only have a tip for OCSD. Oh, obsessive compulsive spectrum disorders. Interesting. Okay. For a moment, the tone of her voice changed. It felt like there was a pale flame burning somewhere deep within her voice. But isn't this below a hospital? Where they have morgues? Where you can just toss bodies in the morgues? It was a pale flame of rage, which seemed a cold at first glance, but was in fact incredibly hot. Serika tugged at my sleeve and whispered. She pointed at a bed in the back with her other hand. I could see something moving past what looked like a curtain. Uh, 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 Someone appeared from within the curtain. The girl in the file, Yamazoe Uki, did, didn't seem to notice us. She moved around from one patient to another, doing her best to take care of them. I could hear Kunosato whisper. あの、彼女からどうやってスマホを返してもらえばいいでしょう。説得とかしても聞いてくれるかどうか。むしろ警報でも鳴らされたら。私はあの子をここから連れ出す。スマホの話なんて言うのはその後でいくらでも聞け。
Kurosato must have decided that there was nothing to be gained by talking, because she quickly moved around behind her and put her arm on the girl's carotid artery. Then she applied a very light pressure. <laughs> Yamazoyuki moaned for just an instant, and then she slumped backward into Kurosato's arms. She seemed to have passed out. Oi. Oh, oh, oi. Time limit. She put the unconscious girl on her back and then ran outside the room without bothering to wait for us. I was stunned at her speed, but there was no time for hesitating. I motioned to Serika and Ito and ran out into the hallway. We followed after Kurosato as fast as we could. Just like she said, if we got lost here, we'd be caught for sure, and who knew what would happen to us then? God, he's not following us, is he? I didn't know who was doing these experiments or why, but their victims were suffering horrible fates. As I ran, it felt as if their screams of rage were following. Are they following? Oh, we made it out! Okay, that was easy. We followed Kunosato as fast as we could, and then made it outside the hospital via a different route than before. Kunosato was sweating like a racehorse and her breathing was heavy, but she never let her guard down for a second. Instead, she seemed to be looking around intently. We were at the back of the hospital. This seemed like the exit where they moved corpses from the morgue to the hearse. For that reason, there was a fence surrounding us that kept us hidden. Kurosato had evidently taken this fence into account in her escape plans from the start. I was too out of breath to speak, so Serika spoke for me. We were almost at the rear gate to the hospital. She started to run toward it. We followed her with the last of our strength. There was a guard station there, but inside there were only two men, asleep, heads pointed at the ceiling. Man, she's committing a lot of crimes tonight. I don't know if I want to associate with her anymore. I frantically made my way through the guard station and finally got past the hospital's outer walls. We ran a little longer and found a van parked in a secluded spot. A broad-shouldered woman looked up at us from the driver's seat. It was hard to tell how old she was. Her attitude and bearing made her look like an older person, but the mischievous grin on her face made her seem younger. And what was a D sword? Didn't she say something about that in the monitoring room? Kurosato opened the rear door and laid Yamazoe Uki on the back seat. Kunosato hadn't even dropped her attitude for Detective Shinjo, but now she was being polite. Just who was this woman? She seemed to be referring to us, but what did she mean by good? She was as arrogant as ever, 
And like usual, she was pissing me off. Her voice got a little sharper as she pointed to the middle seat in the back of the van. We could hear what sounded like a lot of yelling from the direction of the hospital. We quickly jumped inside and closed the door. Kurosato got in the front passenger seat. The van started quietly and headed off into the night. Dang, a successful heist! Without them, we would have died for sure. Just stumbling around, would have ran into that lady. Alright, well, it's been 25 and a half minutes, so I'd like to end this video here, and we'll pick this up again next time. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching. Bye bye